Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. The planting continues here in the back of my garden at the terrace garden. And I'm planting a hat because I want to plant some really nice, rich, zingy colors. They're not there yet because if you look in my back, you see everything is very dreamy and whimsical. This is how I love to start my garden here with like a lot of pastels, like blush and white and these like violet tones. But as the year progresses and the temperatures are rising and also going into autumn when you suddenly have autumn the foliage in the garden I love to have rich colors I love to have like crimson and red and burgundy and deep purple and blue so I really love that the garden has an evolution throughout the year so how I want to structure today's video is first of all I quickly want to tour you around and show you the area where I want to do some planting with you today which is just a starting point because I don't have all the plants that are bound to go into this area yet. Then I want to quickly show you what kind of plants I have planted together with you and at the end of the video I hope that I'm one step closer into developing the slope or the terrace garden for this year. So hope that you're going to have some fun with me in my garden today. I feel this is really good example on how I love to start my garden here in terms of colors also with the aquilegia because they're so dreamy and whimsical how they're like dancing in the wind and how they cross pollinate they create really lovely new varieties that you probably can't even buy like this really lovely purple one here and then this is like white and purple combined together so really love this little drift what I love too is and I really keen that I can finally show you the flowers on this one. This is a clematis that I planted a couple of years ago and I built this framework here which you can't really see anymore because the clematis is so vigorous and now finally the first blooms are appearing. A wonderful blush tone, very delicate, especially when you have this big drift of napata in the back there. This is a variety called Walker Slow. And you know what, I think they're just three plants, three or four plants. They're so vigorous here, they love it in the garden. This is everything I want to plant today, by the way. So I put everything up there, but quickly I want to show you the area where these plants are bound to go. This is the second layer of the terrace garden. And in the back, this is where I want to plant with you today. So in the front, there is really nice catinus here and some very dark bearded iris that you can just see on your right side. And then in the middle of it all, there is my bench. There's still a lot of landscape fabric here. Uh, which I try to cover within the next month or so. So if we continue walking, on the right you see all the plants that I want to put in the ground with you. And then on the left, Rose Therese Bonnier, perfect pink, heavily scented. I really love this rose. And then a big drift of bearded iris and aquilegia in a very dark color, almost black purple. Quite incredible, really. Here on the right, there is a beautiful big drift of the napata and then down there this is a terrace where I want to do some planting. There are some perennials in here and they all came back really beautifully. First of all there is a miscanthus. This is a variety called Red Chief. So in autumn it is going to change color to a real beautiful crimson. Then there is another drift of allium. Those are summer alliums. Kind of smaller, dark purple but really lovely, really dreamy. Next to it, there is a drift of panstamon, this variety called dark towers, which are propagated from seed. Problem is that they were not supposed to be here. I actually wanted to have them in the upper garden and I forgot to transplant them. And now it is clearly too late because they're almost about to bloom. So this is a project for next year. Bearded iris, oh my, I really have a big love affair with bearded iris, but this one is incredible, come on. They are even centered. I mean, the color, it's something in between blue, violet, and then, white on the top very lovely next to it there is a drift of great burnet this is going to come to bloom in around august time so very long stems and at the end like red tassels then there is a drift of asters this is a variety called violetta the flowers are something in between purple and raspberry so probably berry really is best way in how to describe them with a yellow center quite vigorous as you can tell so far they haven't collapsed which is always a really lovely sight and then here is a big space for planting this is only mulch here so quite some of the planting is definitely going to happen here if i'm just going to show you all the plants that are here in this area this is a really beautiful and totally out of place euphorbia i actually propagated them from cuttings 
two years ago. And this is the first year that they bloom and actually I forgot to transplant them because they were bound to go into the front garden, but this is gonna happen next year then instead. But I'm just happy that they really flower, that out of a cutting you can create such a beautiful plant. I mean, it's fantastic. Here there is a drift of Iris Iberica. I propagated those from seed, which I collected two and a half years ago. So the first two years they were only having the foliage, which is also beautiful because it is kind of like a grassy texture which is really nice sometimes to just lighten up a planting. But this is the first year where at least one of them came to bloom. Lovely, really lovely dark purple. Like in the long run, I think as they get established and when I'm going to have more of these grassy leaves and then a lot of those flower spikes, this will be really a fantastic, really beautiful blob of, bearded, of iris here, iris iberica. But yeah, what I want to do now is really focus on the planting today and give you a quick look at the plants that are bound to go into the ground today. But as I swing around, just look at this combination. I mean, this iris in combination with the napata, that makes me really happy. As I told you before, I really wanna focus on rich and vibrant colors in this area. And then I love to combine it with some foliage interest. My cannas that have all overwintered, they didn't look too promising in the beginning. I think I potted them up two months ago. And for ages, nothing happened, and I really thought I lost them all. But now, since the past two, three weeks, suddenly, I start seeing the first shoots and even the first leaves are revealing. So what I will do with all of my cannas is I will take them still in their pots, put them in my cold frames, keep the cold frames closed, because I think that this additional heat is really gonna help them to bulk up fast and produce a lot of those leaves that I wanna have in this area here. Nevertheless, I already have one plant that I grew from seed that is also providing me with a lot of leaf interest. This is Rickinus. I had it last year and I sow these seeds, I think three weeks ago. It takes a while for these fairly big seeds to germinate, but once they do, there's no stopping them from growing. This really happened within the past seven days. And last year when I had them, an individual plant can grow between one meter 50 and two meters in height. Like in their original habitat, they actually create real trees, but here they are tender. So once the first frost comes, they get mushy and that's it for them. But they're very easy to grow. And I think that they are absolutely perfect for every border because they have quite big leaves in a nice dark color. They're still green now, but as they mature, these leaves are going to be very dark burgundy. And then you also have quite intriguing blooms and the fruits kind of looking prickly, comparable with lychee maybe. Next thing that I have, this is something from my previous planting project and I still have a couple left over. This is millet, variety called red jewels. And I always love to have grasses. This is an annual grass. So it is really whimsical and it is something very soft and like airy in a border, especially when you have big, bold leaf textures, something like canna or rechinus. I think grass is always wonderful in the mix. Then one of the focal plants, a must for this part of the garden, are dahlias. And here, this is Camorra makeup. I had it last year here. I have six plants in total. These are already three years old and you can tell by the size of the container <laughs> that the individual tubers, they are very big. So they all overwintered really well, especially on this variety, I have to say they overwintered extremely well. They already started to shoot even in my basement. And you can tell that within the past couple of months, really, I have really nice, bushy, vigorous plants. Slugs and snails haven't attacked all of them. So I can have two nice blobs. One is gonna go right here, three plants here, and then three somewhere over there. Then this is everything that I grew here, grew from seed or overwintered. Next, I, uh, a plant that I found in the garden center. So I drove to the garden center, not really knowing what I'm actually looking for. And then I found these. These are fuchsias and fuchsias are actually annuals, but there are also some varieties that grow like shrubs. And this one here definitely does because it is really woody. So they told me in the garden center that I might have a chance that I can overwinter them if I want to leave them in the ground. I have to wrap it and mulch it really well in winter time. I only have three plants just to see and try out and test it. But why I really needed to have it is because individual blooms, I think they're very nice. They're very elegant. They have these long stems and then they're just like bell shape, hanging down, waving in the wind again. Very nice with the grass, by the way. But they combine my color palette that I have for this area here. So the individual flower is pinkish red and then purple. Mm. 
and I think it is always nice to have certain kind of flowers that combine your color concept. I want to put it more at the corner of a terrace because as it branches out I think it's going to be really nice when these long flowers are bell-shaped kind of like flowering um, hanging over the corner of the terrace and waving in the wind. So I'm really excited to see how they will perform throughout the year. The next plant, this was an impulse buy. I saw them and I thought I need to have them. Steely blue salvia. Look at these flowers. I mean, they are just magnificent, aren't they? Fun thing is no label at all and they were labeled as uh, lobelia in the garden center. So I was like, that is a salvia. That is definitely not a lobelia. Um, they are definitely annuals here, so there's no way that I can overwinter them. But I thought maybe I can collect seeds later on in the year. The reason why I bought them, I thought that they work really well with the dahlias because the dahlias Kimura makeup is dark red, not burgundy, but a nice dark rich red. And then the blue in between as an underplant. And as this kind of like flower spikes, like poking through here and there throughout the entire year, I feel that this might be quite a beautiful combination. This is a first for me. So what I will do now is take my plants, distribute them here. Everything is mulched. Um, this is the one thing where the mulch sometimes is not ideal, but in the long run, the mulch is always great because it really retains the moisture in the soil. But now if I plant something big like this, I really have to remove the mulch and have to see how much soil I have to dig out. But still, I'm excited to finally get my plants into the ground. I very quickly wanted to show you my cannas now that I talked about it. So some of them you see, they're not looking too bad. At least there are a couple of leaves. Some of them kind of look totally dead. While others, there is at least a little sign of fresh growth coming here. So yeah, uh, what I will do is really, I will just water them, I'll put them in the cold frames, and then let's see. I kind of feel like I should just forget about them, maybe for a month or so, and then check them again. And if they really don't want to grow properly, then I just buy some new ones and have a different strategy on how to overwinter them next year. At least a couple of them. I mean, not bad, right? Oh, and slugs and snails definitely came in and ate them already a little bit. Before I start with the planting, I just quickly want to show you how I spaced everything out because I think that this is also quite interesting. And immediately you can see that all the gaps are filled. What I really love for this part of the garden is to squeeze as much in as you possibly can. I don't want to see soil. I really want to have almost like a jungly feel to it. I think this combination is going to be really pretty with the miscanthus, which is still going to grow a lot in the next couple of weeks. But then a lovely trio of the Kimura Makeup Dahlia and then with the blue salvia in between and instantly you can see how important sometimes these dominant colors are. I mean, it is a steely blue and amongst all the greenery here is really intriguing. And I think throughout the summer month, this is going to be quite a spectacular salvia here. Then just behind my beautiful iris, this is where I put the millet grass. I wish I would have more of them. Like for next year, I definitely add more seed of this for my shopping list because you just need a lot of them and they're so beautiful and they're easy to grow. So yeah, I really want to have more of those. Then if we just continue walking, there you see a big gap of nothing here and another one there. This is where I want to grow my cannas. And if mine are not really going to pick up a lot of growth, then I just go to the garden center, buy some new and overwinter them different. Then here at the corner, as I told you, this is where the three fugues are. And I think that they will look really interesting there. Then again, another trio of dahlias, exactly the same to how I did it in the first corner. So with a lot of the salvia growing in between. And then here, there is my first nice big drift of rachinus. So they look very small now, but believe me, when I do a summer garden tour, this is going to be quite a different scene. And then just behind my black box, just in case if you wonder what it is, this is where I just put my blankets and pillows and all the things that I need for my bench here. Just behind it, there are three more rechinas. There you go, there you can see them, because I feel that really next to the dead hedge, it's important to have something quite big and this is going to be lush and big and interesting. So yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun start into this border for this year. So what I will do is grab my shovel and start the planting.
As I often like to do it, I want to put the last plant with you in the ground together and also give you some more information about these fuchsias in particular because they are new to my garden and I think that they might be quite interesting for a lot of you, especially if you're gardening in a milder climate zone to where I am. I'm here in a zone 7b at the south coast of the Baltic Sea. So it is a little iffy if these plants are going to make it through winter, but if you are in a warmer climate zone, they will make it through winter. And then they can be really intriguing shrubs really because according to the label this variety can grow one meter or one meter fifty in height so it is really a shrub it's not like one of these common average annuals that you would normally grow or when you think about fuchsias in terms of location they prefer full sun so here they get a lot of sun throughout the entire first part of the day then at noon time there is a little bit of shade cast by these big trees here to my right which is not always bad because then in the big heat of noon they won't suffer so much and then also the nice thing is that the moisture generally stays fairly well in this area of the garden in terms of soil they shouldn't be too fuzzy so an average garden soil should definitely do the job and as you see they flower really pretty red purple and they will keep on flowering pretty much throughout the entire summer the leaves they are elongated nice fresh green a little bit red veins running through those leaves and they will drop those leaves in winter time so so if you grow it as a perennial shrub, what you can do really is come in them in about March time and cut it back as you would most of your hardwoods and shrubs in your garden. When it comes to the planting now, so let me just try to find a good spot for it. It's going to go right here in the front of a corner. So just imagine now if these branches start grow outwards here and then they're like, like spilling over. Is that the right word? They're kind of just like hanging over here and then I have this cascade of really cute bell-shaped blooms. I feel that this is a really nice and intriguing combination. So what I do now just waddle the soil around a little bit here. It's nice and lofty in this area because I prepared it. Then I come in with the organic bone chips that I always use. They break down to nitrogen and they prepare your soil. So just a little bit in here just give it a good stir and that's it so now let's see they are a little bit pot bound and pot bound basically means that the plants um, were in the container quite long and the roots start growing round and round in the container and depending on how the roots look you might want to loosen some of those roots if you have plants that have really fibrous roots for example heather i would always recommend do not disturb it but if you have plants that have big fleshy roots and leader roots like this fuchsia does so if you look here for example hope you get to see it this is where you can come in and try to untangle it so that this is going to grow see this is what you want to release from the big tangle so that it's not going to continue to grow round and round and stays pot bound so i'm just going to come in and get some of those bigger fleshy roots nice that's pretty much it so they are loose now and then plant it level to how it was in the container. Always every plant has a front and a back. So here the front basically is facing like outside of the terrace so that these branches are reaching towards the sun, like west facing. Always firm it in nicely so that the entire rootstock has a good contact with the surrounding soil. And then back goes the mulch. I also saw last year I had some snapdragons here. The variety is cherry cola, mini mini cherry cola, something like that. Uh, Thompson Morgan seed. They were really pretty and I self seeded. Some of them volunteered to come up here and I was like, oh, I'm just going to leave them because they were very pretty last year. So I'm sure that they will be the same pretty this year. Isn't that cute? I like it. I also still I had a moment where I thought I might want to reduce, uh, reduce, take away the wattle fans here. But I still think it is nice. I really want to go for a jungly feel in this area and jungle it is. Jungle with plastic, yes. But I'm still on my mission. I'm going to mantle all of it. So at one point the backdrop will be beautiful black stained wood. But I think it's so nice to see it also from this angle now and to see how everything fills up. Especially you know that a lot of these plants that they will definitely grow in fairly well and they will grow to quite a substantial height, especially the dahlias. They'll grow pretty much the height to what these asters are already now. But from this angle, look how nice it is with the sun, like with the trees in the back and then the cast, the shade and you see 
the reflection of the sun. I really love it at this time of the day. I also love these. I think when they're gonna pick up some growth and they'll be smothered in blooms, they look really, really pretty. Aren't they nice? For a lot of time, I thought maybe they're a little, I hate to say a data, but actually I think that futures are quite cool and they really deserve a revival. So I definitely, I'm on a mission to start with these and let's see maybe more for next year. Really happy with the salvia. I have watered everything in already. My goodness, the salvia. I bought them two days ago and they were bone dry, but now they came back really fast. This is a good thing. For a second I was like, uh-oh, but now they are looking lush and green and perfect. Look at these blooms again. I mean, isn't that just an amazing sight? I can already envision them. In the back there, still very, very small, the rachinus, but I know that in a month, maybe two from now, they definitely cover up all of this like landscape fabric in the back. So I have two nice big gaps for my canis here, which makes me really happy. I think that once the garden center carries more of these blue salvias, I might buy a couple of more of them and just really fill the gaps, kind of like a big filler gap plant in here because now I have the really nice penstemon which doesn't really make a lot of sense here as I told you before but it is going to come to bloom it's going to look beautiful so it's still going to love it obviously but then um, I think I'm going to cut them back to make sure that they won't set seed and then maybe I'm just going to fill the corners with some more of these beautiful salvias also here at the front in between the millet grass yeah I think this is going to look really cute but for the moment I'm really going to enjoy all of these bearded iris here and also the nepeta. It's filled with bees, by the way. It is a perfect plant if you want to attract a lot of wildlife to your garden because a lot of different kind of bees are even in here. That's it for today's video. It's really warm, by the way, again. So I'm just looking at myself and I'm like, oh my, I look a little bit like parma ham in the sun. And you know what, I also feel the part. But it's kind of nice here now sitting in the shade of the trees. There's a little wind picking up. And the beauty of the slope or the terrace garden, and I keep on telling you, but just in case if this is the first video you ever see of me, see, I'm sitting here and the bearded iris, they're towering. They're taller to what I am. So you really have a total different vista on your plants suddenly. Also, when I sit here, the dahlias, they are kind of like surrounding me. It is just a really intriguing space and it just has a lot of opportunities on how you can explore your garden in different levels. But I hope that it was interesting for you. Maybe some inspiration for your own garden, some inspiration for some new plants or for some color combinations. I'm going to give you some updates and I'm going to keep you posted. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you if you give me a thumbs up. Thank you if you subscribe to my channel. And I'll be back very soon with more garden projects. So I hope you are too and I'd love to welcome you next time around. Take care guys. Bye. Thank you.